Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICC Class 9 Physics Chapter 7 Reflection of Light. We will be discussing the topic Sign Convention and the uses of spherical mirrors. Also, we will be solving questions from Exercise 7C. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. So in our previous sections, we have understood what are the different terms that are used in case of a spherical mirror. Pole, center of curvature, radius of curvature, focal length, all these we have discussed. Now today we will be first finding a relationship between the focal length and radius of curvature. So here you have to understand one thing. In both the cases we will be considering, that is first we will be taking the case of a concave mirror and next we will be taking the case of a convex mirror. Okay. So what is the relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature okay so whether it is a concave mirror or whether it is a convex mirror the relation is same that is focal length will be equal to half of the radius of curvature okay so first we'll be taking the proof of we'll be understanding the proof we'll be proving in case of a concave mirror the focal length is half the radius of curvature okay first consider this diagram so you can see this diagram here you have a concave mirror so this is your concave mirror okay then P is pole, pole is represented by letter P, F is the focus, capital letter F is focus, C is the center of curvature. What is focal length? We have studied. What is focal length? Focal length is the distance between the pole and focus. It is represented by small letter F. F is the focal length. Okay. Now, what is the radius of curvature? Radius of curvature is the distance between the pole and the center of curvature, which is represented by letter R. R is the radius of curvature. So, what is the relation? Focal length is equal to radius of curvature divided by 2. Okay. So, we will start the proof. First, we are taking the case of a concave mirror. Concave mirror. Okay. So, just look at this diagram. Here you can see a light ray BD. Okay. Light ray BD is parallel. This is an incident light ray. It is parallel to the principal axis. So, we know that a light ray which is parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, what happens? It will move towards the focus. Yes, we have studied this. So, from infinity, when light rays comes and strikes, parallel light rays comes and strikes the mirror, what happens? It gets reflected and gets converged at the focus. This is why we call a concave mirror as a converging mirror. Okay. So, here you can see the light ray is moving towards the focus. Okay. So, when this happens, okay, here this is the incident ray and dr is the reflected ray. Okay. Now, you can see an angle theta. What is angle theta here? Angle theta is the angle made between the incident ray and the normal. How do we draw a normal? We have to consider the center of curvature and the point of incidence. Okay, here center of curvature is C and point of incidence is D. Okay, draw a line that is passing through the center of curvature and the point of incidence. You will be getting the normal. Okay. Angle between normal and the incident ray we call the angle of incidence. So, here theta is the angle of incidence. Yes. So, angle of incidence I is equal to angle B D C. Okay. Angle B D C. Okay. Now, this angle B D C will be equal to angle F D C. What is the reason? Angle F D C. What is the reason? We know according to the laws of reflection. We have studied the two laws of reflection. First law states that the angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. And the second law states that the incident ray, reflected ray, normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. So, according to the first law of reflection, we will be having angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. So, reason is law of reflection. Law of reflection. Okay. Now, here you can see BD is parallel to CP. We have said that the light ray is parallel to the principal axis. Okay. So, here when you have a set of parallel lines. Okay. When you cut it with the transversal, we know the corresponding angles will be equal. So, here these two are the corresponding angles. 
okay then we know that the alternate interior angles will be equal this angle equal to this angle alternate exterior angle will be equal so when you consider bd and cp parallel lines bd and cp you can see dr is a transversal yes dr is a transversal okay then dc is also a transversal so consider this dc okay transversal dc is considered okay so when the parallel lines is cut with the transversal alternate interior angles are equal so this angle will be equal to this angle that is angle b d c is equal to angle d c f okay d c f what is the reason alternate interior angles okay so this is the second one okay here on both the equations you have left hand side b d c okay which means right hand side should also be equal therefore angle f d c equal to angle d c f f d c you can see f d c d c f these two angles are equal okay what does it mean so here you will understand that d c f and f d c these two angles belongs to the same triangle so we are considering the triangle c f d in triangle c f d we have two angles equal when two angles are equal this triangle we call an isosceles triangle okay so and the lines which are opposite or the side which is opposite to equal angles will be equal this is a property of triangle okay for that reason we'll be having cf is equal to df okay these two sides are equal okay now we are considering a concave mirror with the very small aperture okay very small aperture in that case this d and p will be very close to each other okay if d and p are very close to each other what does it mean cf is already equal to df which means df and pf will be almost equal because d is somewhere here it is very close to p okay therefore we will be having df is equal to approximately equal to pf if df and pf are equal we are having cf is equal to df which means cf will be equal to pf okay cf is equal to pf now what is cf and what is pf so here we have radius of curvature r is equal to cp and the focal length f is equal to fp or pf okay also we know that cp is equal to cf plus pf okay so here we have cf is equal to pf so this can be written as cp is equal to pf plus pf since cf and pf are equal in place of cf i am putting pf okay which means cp is equal to 2 times pf if cp is equal to 2 times pf then what is pf pf will be equal to cp divided by 2 what is cp cp is the radius of curvature r by 2 and what is pf pf is the focal length f so here we have got f is equal to r divided by 2 or focal length is equal to half the radius of curvature okay so this is a proof when you take the case of a concave mirror next we'll find the relationship between focal length and radius of curvature in case of a convex mirror the relationship is same whether it is concave or convex mirror focal length will be equal to half of the radius of curvature so here we are considering a convex mirror what is a convex mirror a convex mirror is a part of a spherical mirror we know this okay here the back side that is here the bulged portion will be the reflecting surface clear okay now you can see a light ray bd is a light ray which is striking the convex mirror okay what happens when a parallel light ray strikes a convex mirror in case of concave mirror the reflected ray travel towards the focus okay here what happens it appears to the reflected ray it appears to diverge from the focus okay it appears the reflected ray appears to come from the focus so you can see the reflected ray dr is the reflected ray 
okay incident ray reflected ray how is the normal dot you have to consider the point of incidence d is the point of incidence center of curvature will be behind the convex mirror in case of convex mirror center of curvature and focus will be behind the mirror okay so here you have the center of curvature when a line is drawn connecting d and c and extended backward you will be getting the normal okay so nc is the normal okay angle made between the incident ray and normal is the angle of incidence which is here angle b d n and this is equal to angle r d n what is the reason same thing that is law of reflection angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection law of reflection first one okay now you can see bd is parallel to pc okay these are parallel lines you can see a transversal cutting nc is the transversal that is cutting the parallel lines transversal is cut by the parallel lines which means this angle and this angle will be equal Okay, parallel lines when a transversal pass these two angles are equal what do you call these angles corresponding angles therefore angle b d n is equal to angle f c d reason corresponding angles corresponding angles okay now you can see that rdn angle rdn is equal to angle fdc what is the reason this is rdn and this is fdc they are equal because they are vertically opposite angles when you draw two lines okay crossing each other so these lines these two angles will be equal and these two angles will be equal reason vertically opposite angle vertically opposite angles okay so this is the third one Okay, here when you consider the triangle, you are considering the triangle DFC. Okay, considering the triangle DFC. FDC should be equal to DCF or FCD. These two angles should be equal. Only then we can go to our proof. Okay, so what are we having? First, we are having BDN is equal to RDN. Okay, BDN and RDN are equal. Then we are having BDN is equal to FCD. Okay. What does it mean? RDN will be equal to FCD. Okay. From these two, when you combine, you will be getting angle RDN is equal to angle FCD. Okay. RDN equal to FCD. Okay. Then third one we are having RDN is equal to FDC, which means from this, we can combine these two. These two can be combined. You will be getting FDC here and FCD here. RDN on the left hand side, RDN on the left hand side. Okay, left hand sides are the same. Therefore, right hand side should be the same. Therefore, angle FDC equal to angle FCD. FDC equal to FCD. Okay, therefore, in the triangle, the sides opposite to equal angles are equal which means FD will be equal to FC. Now, what is FD and FC? Let's see. So, here what is the focal length? Focal length F will be equal to distance between the pole and the focus. Here the distance between pole and focus is the focal length which is PF. What about the radius of curvature? Distance between the pole and the center of curvature that is PC. Okay. And this PC will be equal to PF plus CF. Okay, so here we are having CF or FC is equal to FD. Okay, now when you consider a convex mirror of small aperture, D will be approximately in place of P. Okay, approximately somewhere here it will be there. Which means you will be having FD. FD equal to FP. Okay, so FD is equal to FC, FD is equal to FP, which means FC is equal to FP. Okay, FC is equal to FP. Okay, so FP and PF are the same, FC and CF are the same. Okay, therefore the radius of curvature R can be written as PF plus PF. That is R is equal to 2 times PF. Okay, what is PF? 
PF is the focal length. So, R is equal to 2 times F and F is equal to R divided by 2. So, we got the same relation in case of concave mirror and convex mirror. The focal length is always equal to half the radius of curvature or you can say radius of curvature is 2 times the focal length. R is equal to 2 times focal length. So, this is the relation between. So, when radius of curvature is given, we can find focal length. And when focal length is given, we can find the radius of curvature. Let us take an example. What is the focal length of a concave mirror if its radius of curvature is 20 centimeter? Given radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. R is equal to 20 centimeter. We have the relation radius of curvature is equal to 2 times focal length. From where we are getting, we know focal length is half the radius of curvature. F is equal to R divided by 2 which means radius of curvature will be equal to 2 times F. Okay, so F is equal to R by 2. We need to find the focal length. F is equal to 20 centimeter divided by 2 which is 10 centimeter. Therefore, focal length of the concave mirror is 10 centimeter. Focal length is 10 centimeter. Okay, so this is a magnitude. Second example, what is the radius of curvature of a convex mirror if its focal length is 30 centimeter? Here focal length is given, we have to find the radius of curvature. Focal length, focal length, F is equal to 30 centimeter. We have radius of curvature is equal to 2 times focal length, which is 2 into 30 centimeter equal to 60 centimeter. Therefore, the radius of curvature, radius of curvature is equal to 60 centimeter. 60 centimeter is the radius of curvature of the given convex mirror. Sign conventions for the measurement of distances. Okay. So, here we will be following some rules. Okay. We know in case of a graph, when you take a graph, you will be having Cartesian graph, you will be having x-axis and y-axis. Okay. So, this is x, o, x dash, this is y, o, y dash. Okay. Horizontal, x-axis, vertical, y-axis. Okay. Now, we know this part is a positive x-axis. This is positive y-axis, negative x-axis, negative y-axis. Okay. So, we are measuring all the distances with respect to the origins. So, origin is taken as a reference point. Okay. With respect to origin, we will do all the measurement. Okay. So, towards the positive side, that is towards the right side, you will be having positive values. Okay. Towards the left side, you will be having negative values. Similarly, towards the upside, you will be having positive values. Downside of zero origin, you will be having negative values. So, here this point, Cartesian point is 0, 0. The abscissa and ordinate points will be equal to 0. Okay, that is where origin is. Yes. So, here what happens when you move towards this, this side? Towards the right side, what is happening? You will be having some values for the x coordinate y coordinate will be 0. So, this is how the case of a graph is. Similarly, you can measure distances using this type of a graph. Okay. This is what sign conventions are. You Cartesian sign convention. Okay. So, here in this case, you have the principal axis. Okay. So, this principal axis is the x axis. Okay. In the x axis, we know from the origin, you are having positive and negative side. Okay, positive values and negative values. So, principal axis is taken as the x-axis and the pole is taken as the origin. Okay, pole is the origin. So, this is the origin. Okay, upside you will be taking positive values. Downside you will be taking negative values. Okay, so here same as in the case of a graph. Positive, upside and below zero below the origin you are having negative side. So, first rule is all distances are measured from the pole of the mirror taken as origin. The rays are made incident from the left. Okay. So, pole is taken as the origin. Incident rays that is always we are keeping the object. Okay. Object is always kept towards the left. When object is towards the left, we can see that the light rays will be coming from the left side. Okay, then the image can be formed on the right side or on the left side. Both are possible. 
Yes. So here you have to remember pole is taken as the origin and the light rays will always start from the left hand side or it starts coming from the left hand side. Clear? Okay. So here you will have to remember some things. We, have, we need three type, three distances will be measured mainly. Okay. The first one is object distance. Object distance. Object distance is the distance of the object from the pole which is represented by small letter u. Then you will be having image distance. Image, what is image distance? Image distance is the distance of the image from the pole, which is represented by V. Then you have the focal length. For every mirror, there will be a fixed value for focal length. Focal length, which is the distance from the pole to the focus, represented by small letter f. These distances can be measured, okay, using the sign conventions. So here you have to remember one thing. Sign, the positive or negative sign is very important. Okay, if the sign changes, the complete values will be changing. So, we've got the first rule. Okay, object is always towards the left side, which means the U value will always be negative. Now, the second one, the distances measured along the principal axis in the direction of incident light are positive, while those opposite to the incident light are negative. What do you understand? So, this is the direction towards the right. Okay. That, that is distance towards the right, which means incident light will always be, be moving towards right. Okay. So, this is how it, it will start from left. It is moving towards right. So, when you come, so we know that when you take a normal graph, when distances are measured towards this side, you will be getting positive values. Yes, you will be getting positive value. If you move to this distance, what you have to do, you have to subtract. So, here you have 3 and this side you are moving 2, which means you are subtracting. This side you are moving to means you will be adding. Okay. So, distances that are that is always measured towards the right side will be, give, will be getting positive value. So, distance measured along the principal axis in the direction of incident light. Incident light is starting from the left and moving towards the right are positive. While those opposite to the incident light are negative. Okay. That is in this direction if you are making the measurement it will be having the negative values. In this direction positive values. Clear? So, this is the second rule. Now, the third rule, the distances above the principal axis are taken positive and those below the principal axis are taken as negative. Same, when you take the y-axis, okay, when you take the y-axis, y, o, y dash. From the origin to the up, when we move, you will be getting positive value. Below that, negative value. Similarly, principal axis is the x-axis. Okay, so mirror is taken as the y axis. So positive above the principal axis positive value, below the principal axis negative value. Here normally when object is kept, object is always kept above the principal axis. Okay, so object will be in this way. You may get inverted images. So we have discussed all the ray diagrams in case of concave mirrors and convex mirrors. We have discussed the ray diagram. So we have seen that in many cases you will be getting inverted images. Inverted images means the image is formed below the principal axis. In that case you will be getting negative values for the height of the image. Okay. So height that is measured to the up are positive. Above the principal axis are positive. Below the principal axis are negative. Okay, so this is the third rule. Got the three important rules? Next one, focal length of a concave mirror is negative and that of a convex mirror is positive. Why so? So when you take the sign conventions, okay, you will be able to see that in case of concave mirror, the focal length will be giving, the magnitude will be there, but the value that is there will be a sign. Okay, the sign will be negative. Always focal length of a concave mirror is negative and that of convex mirror is positive. Why this is happening? So when you take a concave mirror, so this is a concave mirror. Okay, here you have the principal axis, pole, focus, center of curvature. Consider a light ray which is falling on the concave mirror. Okay, this is a parallel light ray. What happens to this light ray? After reflection, it will be moving towards the focus. Okay, so here you are able to see that the focus is in front of the mirror. Okay, we know that the distances which are measured towards the left of the pole or to the left of the mirror will be taken negative values. Okay. So, from here, from the pole, we are doing the measurement. In which side, in which direction is the light moving? Light rays are moving in this direction. Okay. In which direction are we making the measurement? We are starting from the pole and towards the focus we are measuring, which means we are measuring the distance in a direction which is opposite to the direction of the movement of light ray. 
okay right ray is towards right side and the distance that we are measuring is towards the left which means this will be a negative value okay negative so here this distance is the focus focal length okay so between pole and focus will measure the distance and it should be given negative value negative sign why because it is measured towards the left okay now when you take the case of a convex mirror okay here we will be having the pole okay for a convex mirror focus is behind the mirror center of curvature is also behind the mirror so when a light ray falls on the mirror what happens to it it will appear to diverge from the principal focus of the convex mirror okay so this is the direction of light ray okay so you can see that this is appearing to diverge from here okay here you can see the focus and center of curvature are towards the right okay so here this is the direction in which the light ray is moving so the our measurement is also done in the same direction from pole to the focus this is positive okay positive direction so therefore the focal length of a convex mirror will be positive and that of a concave mirror will be negative formally for the spherical mirrors so in case of a spherical mirrors if you know object distance and image distance you can find the focal length if you know the focal length and the image distance you can find object distance if you know focal length and object distance you can find image distance so there is a relation connecting the object distance image distance and the focal length okay so the expression relating the distance of object u distance of image v and the focal length f for a spherical mirror is called the formula for spherical mirrors okay so the relation is 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u okay 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u okay this is also known as a mirror formula now when you take the case of a concave mirror Okay, when you have a concave mirror, in case of a concave mirror, we have pole, we have focus, we have center of curvature, this is a light ray. Okay, so here, when you take the case of object distance, okay, object distance will always be negative. So, what is the reason? Here you can see the light ray is moving towards the mirror. Okay, object is measured in a direction that is opposite to the direction of motion of the light ray. Because here we have pole, let's say object is always kept to the left side of the mirror, okay, to the left side of the mirror, which means when you make the measurement from the pole, this is in the opposite direction of the direction in which the light ray is moving, okay, therefore u will be negative or in simple words, you can say that this is your y-axis, okay, mirror is your y-axis, towards the left of the y-axis, you will have negative values. Towards the right, you will be having positive value. So, here the object is towards the left. Therefore, object distance will be negative. Okay. Object distance is negative in the case of a concave mirror. Now, what about the case of a convex mirror? You consider a convex mirror. Here you are having the pole. Here you have focus. Here you have center of curvature. So, object is always kept towards the left. Here somewhere you are having the object. Light rays from the object is striking the mirror. Okay. So, here you can see that. This is the direction in which the light ray is moving and our measurement that is object is here from pole we are making the measurement to the object. Okay, So in a direction that is opposite to the direction of the motion of light ray we are making the measurement therefore here also the u value will be negative. Okay, u value will be negative. Understood? Next is the focal length. Focal length we have already said. Focal length of a concave mirror is negative and focal length of a convex mirror is positive. What is the reason? Focus of a concave mirror is towards the left of the mirror and focus of a convex mirror is towards the right, okay, behind the mirror. Next, what about the case of the image distance, V? So, we have seen the different ray diagrams, okay, when the object is at infinity, when the object is at a far distance, object is beyond C, object is at C, object is between C and F, object is at F, object is between F and B. In different cases, we are getting different images. Okay, so up to the sixth case, that is up to, that is when object is at infinity, at a far distance, beyond C, at C, between C and F and at F. In all these cases, we have seen the image formed will be on the same side. Okay. On the same side the image is formed, image formed is real and the image formed is inverted. When the image is formed on the same side, which means image is towards the left, 
okay and on the left side of the mirror image is formed we will be getting negative values we will be negative but in one case you are getting positive value remember when the object is between f and p here you have the object what happens the image will be formed behind the mirror okay virtual and erect image is formed behind the mirror in this case okay when a virtual and erect image is formed since it is formed behind the mirror which means towards the right side of the mirror you will be measuring from here so this is the direction in which the light ray is moving okay and this is the direction in which the measurement is made same direction therefore positive values or in simple words towards the right side of the mirror you will be getting positive values so we can be both positive and negative it can take negative values and positive value in most cases it is negative value that is the image distance is positive only when the object is placed between the focus and the pole of the concave mirror okay what about the case of a convex mirror so two ray diagram we have discussed one is for the object at infinity and the second case the object is in front of the mirror okay anywhere in front of the mirror in both the cases we have seen that the image is formed behind the mirror that is towards the right virtual and erect image is formed which means anyways the v will be positive so image distance is always positive in case of a convex mirror it can be positive or negative in the case of a concave mirror depending on the position of the object okay so this is the relation 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u if you substitute the values while substituting you have to remember these things put negative values wherever required depending on whether it is a concave or convex mirror okay focal length object distance and image distance will take negative and positive values so negative values always negative values for object distance okay just note this point in case of mirrors plane or spherical mirrors the virtual image is obtained on the other side of the object behind the mirror this we know okay in case of plane mirror that is when you keep a plane mirror in front of you where is the image obtained it will be behind the mirror that is opposite side object and the image will never be on the same side okay so this is the case of a virtual image virtual images are always formed on the on the other side of the object so this is a point to be remembered okay so in case of a concave mirror you will be getting both virtual and real images but when you take the case of convex mirror or plane mirror you will always be getting virtual images and these virtual images can never be obtained on a screen because they are found or they are formed behind the mirror this is another point to remember we have already discussed this in a concave mirror real image is formed on the side of the object that is in front of the mirror so both u and v are negative so what are real images real images are the one which are formed towards the left side that is object is also on the left side image will also be on the left side this type of images can be obtained on the screen just when you keep a screen you can get the image okay since both are towards the left side okay distances that are measured opposite to the direction in which the light ray is moving will be taken as negative or towards the left side of the mirror mirror is considered as the y axis towards the left side of the mirror will be taken as negative okay therefore for real images you will be having u and v both negative now what is linear magnification so linear magnification is represented by the letter capital m okay if the length of the object and image are measured perpendicular to the principal axis the ratio of length of the image to the length of the object is called linear magnification so take this case so here you can see okay the different cases we are dis discussed that is object of size let, let us consider the size of the object or height of the object is taken as o which is some 2 cm okay this 2 cm object when you keep at a different positions that is when you keep the 2 cm object beyond c at c between c and at f at f between f and p in front of a concave mirror you can see that the size of the image is changing that is the size of object is not changing only the distance from the mirror is changing but what is happening when the image is formed you can see that the size of the image is changing okay so we have seen when the object is at infinity we are getting a point sized image okay when it is beyond c a diminished image at c image of same size between c and f enlarged image at f you are getting a highly enlarged image so this is happening right 
So here you can find magnification. What magnification means how much the image is reduced in size or is it equal to the size of the object or is it greater than the size of the object can be determined. Okay. So magnification M is equal to height of the image divided by height of the object. So when the object is at the center of curvature in case of a concave mirror. Okay, image is also formed at the center of curvature and the size of object and image are same. I is equal to O. Okay, in that case magnification will be taking a value 1. Okay, same both of these are same on cancelling you will be getting 1. Okay, now consider the case when the object is beyond C. When the object is beyond C, you can see that the size of the image is less than the size of the object. Okay, so here magnification is such that i by o i less than o okay what does it mean i less than o means here you will be getting a value of magnification that is less than one magnification will be less than one when magnification is less than one we will be getting a diminished image image is smaller than the object okay now next case that is the object is between the center of curvature and the focus or the object is at the focus. In these cases, you will be seeing that the image is enlarged of a greater size than the object. Okay, here m is equal to i by o. Numerator is greater than the denominator. Therefore, the value of magnification i is greater than o. Magnification will be greater than 1. Okay, greater than 1, you will be getting enlarged images. Less than 1, diminished and equal to 1 same size same size okay so m is equal to i by o there is another relation for magnification this is also equal to minus v by u where v is the image distance and u is the object distance so when you take a case of a concave mirror okay for concave mirror we know that Object distance u is always negative. What about the image distance? V is positive and V is negative. Both the cases are there. Okay. So when V is positive, what do you get? Magnification will be. When V is positive, magnification will be here. You are having positive and here you are having negative. Already there is a negative sign. So negative and negative get cancelled. Okay. So magnification will be positive okay positive magnification means the image formed will be virtual and erect virtual and erect okay so here that is in case of a concave mirror virtual and erect image is formed when the object is between the pole and the focus okay so in that case the magnification will take a value that is positive value okay next negative values in all other cases except when the object is between the pole and focus in all other cases you are getting real and inverted images yes in that case you can see that real you will be having v negative okay you and v both are negative here you are having negative here you are having negative and here also you are having negative okay negative into negative becomes positive here the denominator you have a negative that negative go to the numerator which means magnification will be negative negative magnification so negative magnification means real and inverted images formed real and inverted images formed okay so when you take the case of a convex mirror so in case of a convex mirror you know that always the image is formed to the right which means v will always be positive okay u was always negative negative and negative cancel so positive sign magnification will be positive which means we will always have virtual and erect images virtual and erect images so magnification can take values that is negative values and positive values the magnification can be positive one it can be one it can be less than one greater than one less than one magnification diminished greater than one magnification enlarged equal to one same size okay and the magnification if it is taking positive values virtual and erect images if it is taking negative value if it is taking negative value then real and inverted images clear so this is all about the linear magnification remember this relation magnification is height of the image by height of the object or negative sign into 
image distance by object distance. Now we'll be discussing the uses of concave mirrors and convex mirror. First, the uses of concave mirror. First one, they are used as shaving mirrors. When a concave mirror is held near the face, it gives an upright and magnified image. So here you have to remember, we have discussed the ray diagram. So when you have a concave mirror, let's say this is the shaving mirror, concave mirror. Here we have the principal axis. That is when the face is between the pole and focus. So here if you have the object, okay. Now here we have the face. You can see that first light ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection towards the focus. Here you will be having the center of curvature, okay. Second light ray we are considering that is towards, that is towards the center of curvature, this way, okay. So when you extend it backward, okay, they will meet at a point where the image is formed. So here you can see a virtual image is formed, an erect image is formed and this image is enlarged, okay. So in case of shaving mirrors, when you look at the shaving mirrors, even the tiny hairs will get enlarged, okay, they will be, you will be able to see them clearly. So you have to choose as a, con as a shaving mirror, you have to choose a concave mirror of large focal length, okay, so that the object, that is the face lies between the pole and focus of the concave mirror, okay. Image that is formed is enlarged, so you can see everything clearly, okay. Next, concave mirrors which are used as reflector. So, you have seen that when you take a torch and on the torch and in the night, when you hold it towards the sky, okay, you can see the light is moving towards the infinity. So, here what is happening is you will be having a concave mirror, Okay, the object here is the bulb, okay, the torch light bulb, bulb is at the focus, okay, bulb is at the focus. So here, where is the image formed? First light ray, here you will be having center of curvature, here you will be having the pole. First ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection pass through the focus. Second light ray towards the center of curvature, okay, you can see that they will be moving towards the infinity, okay. So, in case of a reflector, it can be a torch, a searchlight or headlights of automobiles. To see distant objects and all, you will be using these ob objects, okay. This, we will be using the torch and searchlights and all. There, a concave mirror is used and the bulb is kept at the focus. So, till infinity, the light rays will be there. Next use of concave mirror as a doctor's head mirror. So you have seen doctors using head mirror. So this is a concave mirror. We know that sunlight can be focused using a concave mirror. So when a parallel beam of light falls on a concave mirror, what happens? It will be focused to a point. Okay. So to view something, so that small area, the light ray get focused and the doctors will be able to see everything clearly. Now the uses of convex mirror, first use of convex mirror as a reflector in street light. So you have seen street lights, the, the street light, street lights they will be using a convex mirror. Here what happens is the light rays which falls on the convex mirror. We know when light rays falls on a convex mirror, it appears to diverge from the focus. Okay. So to a long distance, okay, it get the light rays get spread. Okay, so this purpose you can use a convex mirror. So convex mirror means you can see the light rays gets diverged. It is not getting concentrated. It is not getting to focus but it is getting diverged. To a large area you can see the objects clearly. Next is as a rear view mirror. A convex mirror diverges the incident light beam and always forms a virtual small and erect image behind the mirror between its pole and focus. Now consider the case you are using a plane mirror instead of a diverging mirror or a convex mirror. In that case, the field of view will be very small. Okay, so here the driver will be, you will be having a plane mirror over here. Okay, so these are the light rays after reflection. So this is a reflected ray. Okay, when extended backward, virtual and erect image will be formed here. So this much is the field of view. Okay, only till here it will be there. Only from here, if from here it will be able to see. But when you take the case of a diverging mirror, what happens? So this is how the diverging mirror will be, okay. So here the driver will be that, these are the light rays, okay. So here you will be having the focus, okay. Here you will be having the focus. So light rays will get diverged. When extended backwards, the image will be formed, okay. So here the view, field of view is increasing. So for this reason, in rear view mirrors, as rear view mirrors, we will be using the convex mirrors, 
okay so when vehicles are there behind you okay you are able to see the vehicles if you are using a plane mirror you cannot see all the vehicles but when you use a convex mirror you can see more number of vehicles compared to the case of a plane mirror distinction between a plane concave and convex mirror without touching you cannot touch the mirror if you touch you can see that bulge inward bulge outward or the plane surface you can identify whether it is a plane mirror concave mirror or convex mirror so here what you have to do is you have to hold the concave mirror in front of you in front of your face and then you can identify whether it is a concave mirror convex mirror or plane mirror so first one is if image is upright of the same size and it does not change in size by moving the mirror towards or away from the face so upright image if this is the object image will be in this way it will be of the same size even though you are moving it there is no change and it is a virtual image that is formed in that case it, the mirror that will be used will be a plane mirror okay the normal plane mirror is used size of the image will never change object size and image size will be the same here the magnification will always be one in case of a plane mirror okay the image formed is a virtual image so magnification will always be positive as well now the second case if image is upright okay magnified and increases in size on small movements of the mirror away from the face in that case which type of mirror it is image form can be upright or it can be inverted okay both cases are possible only in concave mirrors so here this is a case when the object is between the pole and focus in case of a concave mirror okay there you can see when the face from the face when you move the mirror backward what is happening what happens to the virtual image will be formed that is sure but in this case what is happening the virtual image that is formed the size of the image will be increasing okay size of image will be increasing so here this is a case of a concave mirror so we are discussing only virtual and erect images okay next the third case that is when you hold it towards your close to your face you can see that that is that is it, your object will be in between the pole and focus okay next if the image is upright diminished and decreases in size on small movements of the mirror away from the face the mirror is convex okay so third case you will be getting a convex here in convex case virtual images erect images or upright images are always formed what is happening diminished images are formed okay so in anywhere in between so anywhere in front of the mirror you will be getting the image that is diminished differences between a concave mirror and convex mirror we have four points the first one it is made that is a simple definition itself it is made by silvering the outer surface of a part of the holosphere so reflection takes place from inner surface so we have said this okay in the previous class previous lecture we have discussed this when you take a holosphere hollow glass sphere and you cut it and the inner surface is kept as it is and the outer surface is silvered the inner surface will act as a reflecting surface so this is a concave mirror just the opposite case of convex mirror here the inner surface is silvered and the outer surface that is a bulging surface is acting as a reflecting surface it is made by silvering the inner surface of the part of hollow sphere so reflection takes place from the bulging surface so next is the light rays incident on it converges after reflection so this is also known as a converging mirror converging mirror it gets converged towards the focus okay next the light rays incident on it parallel light rays incident on it diverges after reflection therefore they are called diverging mirrors diverging mirrors okay next the image formed by it is real as well as virtual so in six cases you are getting real images and in the final case seventh case you are getting a virtual image okay so here always virtual images are formed the image formed by it is virtual for all the positions of the object in front of it next for objects away from c the image is diminished for object at c the image is of the same size and for object within c the image is magnified and larger image is formed okay so we have discussed this also next the image is always diminished in case of a convex mirror the image will always be diminished so this is a main reason why we are using this as a rear view mirror so a diminished image of the vehicle so for example a lorry is behind you are driving a scooty and a lorry is behind you so the size of the lorry you know can you 
take a plane mirror in that case in that plane mirror the lorry is only if you take only a small part can be included but since in case of a convex mirror a di diminished image is formed you can see the whole lorry inside the mirror okay because it is a diminished image formed now let us take an example example 3 the image of an object placed at a distance of 30 cm on the principal axis of a concave mirror from its pole is formed on the object itself find the focal length the linear magnification okay so here you are using a concave mirror in case of a concave mirror we know that the focal length will always be negative okay so image of an object placed at object distance is given object distance is always whether a concave mirror or convex mirror object distance will always be a negative value so minus 30 centimeter okay on the principal axis of a concave mirror from its pole is formed on the object itself which means object and the image are at the same point okay so v will also be equal to minus 30 centimeters okay next we can find the focal length what is the formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u put the values 1 by f is equal to 1 by minus 30 plus 1 by minus 30 which is equal to this can be written as minus 1 by 30 minus 1 by 30 30 is in the denominator taking lcm you get minus 1 minus 1 1 by f so f is equal to minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 divided by 30 so this is 30 divided by minus 2 or minus 30 by 2 equal to minus 15 centimeter so focal length is 15 centimeter with a negative sign because this is a concave mirror so when you find you are able to see that in case of concave mirror always the focal length will be negative value so here we are getting minus 15 centimeter focal length of concave mirror is minus 15 centimeter so second part of the question we have to find the magnification linear magnification m m is equal to i by o if you know the height of the object and height of image you can use this formula if you know the object distance and image distance you can use minus v by u so m is equal to minus v by u put the values minus what is v v is equal to minus 30 okay minus 30 divided by u u is again minus 30 so this becomes equal to minus 30 minus 30 gets cancelled you will be having minus 1 okay what does 1 mean 1 means the image is same size of the object okay negative sign negative sign means real image and then inverted image is formed so if the nature of the image is asked you can say when you know the magnification negative value of the magnification means real and inverted image less than one magnification diminished equal to one same size greater than one enlarged example four when an object is placed a distance of 40 centimeter from a concave mirror the size of image is one fourth that of the object calculate the distance of image from the mirror and what will be the focal length of the mirror so here what is given we are given the object distance u is equal to minus 40 centimeter okay what else is given the size of image is one fourth that of the object i is equal to 1 by 4 that of object okay so here you can see the image is a diminished image okay size of image is less than the size of object okay so also it is given it is a concave mirror in case of concave mirror virtual images formed is only the case when the object is between the pole and focus okay so real this image will be a real image because the size has diminished in that case you will be getting a virtual image which is an enlarged one yes so here the image is diminished which means the image will be a real image real image for real image we know magnification will be taking negative values okay so here what is the magnification so here we are getting i is equal to o by 4 okay we have magnification is i divided by o here i is o by 4 divided by o therefore minus 1 by 4 is the magnification 
Okay. So first part of the question, we have to find the distance of image, which means we have to find V. V will take anyways negative value. Why? Because it is a real image. Real image is formed. Okay. Let's find the value. So here we have magnification is equal to minus V by U. Put the values minus V divided by U is equal to minus 40. What is magnification? Minus 1 by 4. So minus 1 by 4 is equal to minus V divided by minus 40. Negative, negative signs get cancelled. So V is equal to 40 into minus 1 by 4, which is minus 10 centimeters. Okay. So image distance is minus 10 centimeter to on the same side of the object itself. Okay. Next, we have to find B part of the question. We have to find the focal length. So for, for a concave mirror, we know focal length is negative. So when you calculate, you should get surely a negative value. 1 by F is equal to 1 by V plus 1 by U. Put the values 1 by F is equal to 1 by minus 10 plus 1 by minus 40, which is equal to minus 1 by 10 minus 1 by 40, taking LCM denominator 40 minus 1 minus 4, which is minus 5 by 40. Then F is equal to 40 by 5 negative sign, which is minus 8 centimeter. So the focal length is 8 centimeter. Negative sign shows it is a concave mirror. Okay. Now let us solve questions from exercise 7C. Question 3 of exercise 7C. An object of height 2 centimeter. Object height O is equal to 2 centimeter. Is placed at a distance of 20 centimeter in front of a concave mirror. Object distance is minus 20 centimeter. Okay, object distance is always negative. Of focal length, focal length is given 12 centimeter since it is a concave mirror. For a concave mirror, focal length will be negative. Okay, minus 12 centimeter. Find the position, size and nature of the image. Okay, so here we have the focal length and the object distance. We can find the image distance 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u which means 1 by v is equal to 1 by f minus 1 by u. So this can be written as f u numerator u minus f. Okay. Taking LCM we get f u in the denominator. So here u minus f. Put the values. What is u? u is minus 20 f is minus 12 minus of minus 12 divided by minus 20 into minus 12 that is equal to minus 20 plus 12 minus of minus becomes plus divided by minus into minus is positive so okay 12 into 2 is 24 240 okay 1 by v is equal to minus 20 plus 12 that is minus 8 minus 8 divided by 240 which means v is equal to minus 240 divided by 8 that is minus 30 centimeter so in this concave mirror okay image is formed the image distance at a position 30 centimeter from the pole towards the left so image is formed on the same side as that of the object okay next we have to say what is the size of the image how to find the size of the image we know magnification is equal to minus V by U is equal to I by O. Okay. So here we know the value of V. We know the value of U. We know the value of O. So we can find the value of I. I will be equal to O into minus V by U. What is O? O is equal to 2 centimeter into minus of V. Minus of minus 30 divided by U u is minus 20. Okay. So here negative of negative is positive. 30 is here. 2 and 20 can be cancelled. You will be getting 10. Zeros can be cancelled. Negative of negative is positive. Positive 3 divided by minus 1 which is minus 3. Minus 3 centimeter. So here what does this negative sign means? Negative sign means that the image formed will be below the principal axis okay and inverted image will be formed inverted images are always real images the nature of the image so image is a real image it is an inverted image okay 
नेक्स्ट वी कैन फाइंड द मैग्निफिकेशन जस्ट टेक द वैल्यूज ओके मैग्निफिकेशन इज इक्वल टू एंड यू कंसिडर द वैल्यूज इमेज हियर द वैल्यूज थ्री ऑब्जेक्ट इट इज टू थ्री बाई टू विच मीन्स यू विल बी गेटिंग वन पॉइंट फाइव वैल्यू इज वन पॉइंट फाइव ओके साइन विल बी नेगेटिव माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव यू आर ग्रेट गेटिंग अ वैल्यू दैट इज ग्रेटर दैन वन विच मीन्स इट इज एन एनलार्ज इमेज एनलार्ज इमेज इट इज फॉर्म ऑन द सेम साइड एस ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट object is on the left side and the image will also be on the left side understood question number 6 of exercise 7c an object 5 cm high is placed at a distance 60 cm in front of a concave mirror of focal length 10 cm find the position size of the image okay so first what is given the object an object 5 cm high object height is given 5 cm is placed at a distance of 60 cm in front of a concave mirror so object distance is minus 60 cm of focal length this is a concave mirror concave mirror's focal length will be negative minus 10 cm first to find the position we have to find the value of b okay so we have 1 by f is equal to 1 by v plus 1 by u therefore 1 by v will be equal to 1 by f minus 1 by u which is equal to f u u minus f in the numerator put the values what is u minus 60 1 by v is equal to minus 60 minus f is equal to minus 10 minus 10 divided by f into u that is minus 10 into minus 60 which is equal to negative 60 minus of minus is positive plus 10 which is minus 50 okay Minus fifty divided by sixteen to ten is six hundred. Negative negative goes, then you get six hundred. Okay, so V is equal to six hundred divided by fifty. There is a negative sign cancelling. You will be getting minus twelve centimeter. Okay, so from the pole at a distance of twelve centimeter towards the left, towards the left because the negative sign. Okay, next size of the image. How to find the size of the image? Image size by object size is equal to minus v by u. Image will be equal to height of image will be equal to height of object into minus v by u. Height of object is five centimeter into minus of v is minus twelve divided by u is equal to minus sixty. Okay, so negative of negative is positive. Twelve into five is sixty. 60 divided by minus 60, which is equal to minus 1. Okay, which means the size of the image is 1 centimeter. Negative sign shows that the image formed will be a inverted image below the principal axis. Inverted image. Inverted images are always real image. Okay, say so it is formed on the same side of. mirror as the object okay what about here we have the we can see that what is happening to the image image is diminished okay diminished image is formed diminished image okay Question number thirteen of exercise seven c. The erect image formed by a concave mirror is of size double the size of the object. How are u and v related? Okay, erect image is formed. It is a concave mirror, which means object is between the pole and focus. Okay, the image formed will be a virtual image. Size double the size of the object, which means object size is o. Image size will be equal to double, which means two times two into o. How are u and v related? Okay, we have magnification is equal to minus v by u is equal to i by o. Okay, so i by o is minus v by u. What is i by o? I is equal to two into o. 
divided by O is equal to minus V by U. O, O gets cancelled. So, minus V is equal to 2 times U or V is equal to minus 2U. Okay. Which means the image distance will be 2 times the object distance. Okay. Image distance is greater than the object distance and this is the relation. V is equal to minus 2U. Here we have the final question for today. Question 14 of exercise 7c. The magnification for a mirror is minus 3. How are u and v related? We have magnification m given to be equal to minus 3. Magnification is height of image by height of object which is equal to minus v by u. That is minus 3 is equal to minus v by u. Negative signs removed. V is equal to 3 times u. So this is the relation between the v and u. V is equal to 3 times u. That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed the sign conventions. We have also discussed the uses of concave and convex mirror and related to it, we have solved many questions. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.